You know, the bad thing about this camera is it's got to get your whole house in the shot with you. Okay, a week or so ago, I went to Gainesville, Florida and picked up this guitar cabinet here. This thing was dirty and beat up. If you want to see that video, it's the road trip one that came out before this one, or maybe the one before that. It's a recent video road trip to get a speaker cabinet. One thing I've done already is I've scrubbed the heck out of it with a washcloth. So as you can see, it looks a lot cleaner because it is. It's nice and clean now. Some of the stuff I discussed on this cabinet was how he had it wired for forums mono. The back really doesn't look as bad as it did. A lot of that was just stuff that needed scrubbed off of it. Now, one of the things we discussed regarding hardware is when this guy rewired this and took the factory stuff out of here, he only put a screw on each corner in. So this thing is missing almost all of its hardware. Just a lazy dude that thinks four screws is gonna hold this plate in, you know? Did the same thing here. The first thing I wanna do with this cab is get it functioning. I want eight ohms stereo because the heads I'm using with these cabs are stereo. Let's go ahead and do the wiring first to hear what the speakers sound like and everything. And real quick, this is stuff that I grabbed for this thing. I think these are called switchcraft jacks. I don't remember. So this is our stereo left and right. Here are the screws that are gonna go in here that are missing. And I happen to get the grommets that go right here because it's missing these grommets also or whatever you call that. It's a finishing washer. And right here, I have the screws that go in here. This stuff here was probably close to $30. So that's something to pay attention to if you're going to buy a guitar cabinet. Make sure it's got all the hardware and wiring on it. I got this cab for a hundred bucks, so I'm not really complaining about it. All right, let's pull the speaker jack plate off of this thing. Let's pull the back off of this thing now. It'd be pretty quick because the guy only put four screws in it. Here it is. These are the original speakers. Even though they're not labeled, I can just tell by this side sticker that it's the crate speakers they put in this. I have two other cabs just like this one. I see my first problem already. These nice pre-wired jacks that I got, of course the ends are gonna be too small. We'll check it out, but it looks like these are too small. So if you buy these pre-wired, you could be wasting your time and money anyway. All right, here's the guy's 4 ohm mono switch that I just took loose and threw down in here. Let me explain to you guys how ohms work. I'll try to do it as simple as possible. You have series and parallel circuits. Parallel are circuits that run beside each other. A series is a connected circuit. It's kind of like a loop. These are two 16 ohm speakers. Let's just go with these two speakers for right now. This is coming off of your jack. You got a hot side and a negative side. Consider the speaker a coil. Hot is current going in, negative is current going out. To make a series circuit, out of these two 16 ohm speakers, you would take the hot, let it run through on the negative side, run the negative out into the hot of the next speaker. It'll run through, come to ground. And what that is doing is making a series circuit because the power is coming in, going through the coils, coming out, going in, going through the coils, boom, connected together in two loops. Now what that's gonna do when you run in series is it's going to double the ohms. So these being 16 ohm speakers, that's gonna be a 32 ohm load. Now, when you run parallel, it splits the ohms in half. So I'll explain the parallel real quick, which is the way these are hooked up. You got positive, which is in, out, to ground. And then these are just connected, positive and out, ground. These are not in series with each other because it's two independent loops going on and then going to ground. They're sharing the positive. So the current is going in, in parallel, and going out. It's a parallel circuit. So these are two 16 ohm speakers, which means that these two speakers in parallel is an eight ohm load. So if you have eight ohm loads per side, when you run these two sides in parallel, it's gonna be a four ohm load. And that is what is done here. The hot over here on this side is blue, and it's red over here. So what the guy did is he ran the two hots together to the hot pin and the two grounds are ran together to the ground pin. So what that means is these two sides are independent of each other in a parallel circuit. Eight ohm load, eight ohm load makes four ohm load here. 
That's the best I can explain it, I think. My heads are stereo left and right at eight ohms a piece. So what I wanna do is just split these two parallel circuits apart and have this eight ohm parallel circuit right side, eight ohm parallel circuit left side. That's the shit up we want, shiny. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pull one of these leads off and see if this will fit on it. Dude, these things are on tight, bro. I'm trying to pry on the end of this thing a little bit just to help push it off without actually pulling on the post. It's coming off. Yeah! No, it's not gonna fit. Well, we get to solder, guys. Isn't that lovely? I'm gonna take these leads off of this mono jack here. As you can see, the positives are going to a positive post, ground going to ground. How you can tell the ground, it's a straight connection to this ring right here in the center. So in a tip ring configuration, the ring part of the jack is ground. So it makes sense that the grounds are connecting to this ring right here. The hot goes back behind this insulator because it's snaking around up here. So this is the tip and ring. Red and blue is our hots for each side. So let's split these two speakers apart from here. Now I'm gonna pull this wrong size wire off of these two new jacks. Here, check this out. Put this thing in the jack plate. Now this plate will hold these while I put the iron on it. Yes. I need to get this wiring split apart. Now we gotta remember on the left side, yellow is ground. Let's solder these jacks here. Here's the hot, which is right here. Beautiful. Here's the ground. Over here, remember yellow was ground. So we look for the post that would be on the ring that comes across, which is right here. Blue is hot. Yes. Beautiful, man. <laughs> That's factory. What I'm gonna do now is pull these soldered jacks back out of this plate because the two jacks are gonna have to go through a hole in the backboard and then put back into this plate. Cause see, there's no way you can put this plate through the backboard. I just put these jacks on here to help me solder and hold these, pull these two back out. I don't know what size this is for anyone wondering. It is a half inch. It's probably actually metric, but a half inch works. <laughs> I'm gonna put the bag back on the speaker cabinet. And while you do this, gotta run the jacks that we soldered through the slot like that. Yeah. I'm only gonna put four screws in this back until we actually test the speakers and make sure there's no problems. Left and right. We'll see what the dummy would look like put there with the out. It doesn't match. Does it look better than a blank hole? I think I'm gonna leave it like this. That way the only thing missing is the switch really. And then this output would be a dummy. I'm gonna go ahead and try to start these screws. Okay, jack plate is done. We have right speakers, left speakers, and dummy out. I'm happy with it. We're just missing the stereo mono ohm switch here. Really a mono head you can run to this too because you can just run two speaker cables. Let's see if these speakers work. So these heads are stereo. That one's good. That one's good. Yep. Yep. Man, this hardware looks nice. Hell yeah. Well, here it is, man. I think I'm done. Looks pretty straight. 
I glued a piece of plastic that chipped off of a handle over here. <laughs> Overall, it's pretty clean. Well, thanks for hanging out with me through this cabinet restoration project. This is it for now. I've done all I'm going to do, I guess. And I will see you next time. Later.